This is part B of my lecture on cholesterol regulation and homeostasis. In part A, we focused on cholesterol, the molecule itself. In part B, we will focus on its inhibition and regulation. First, we'll discuss the inhibition by small molecules and the development of the statins. And then we'll turn to the regulation by SREBP, that's the sterile regulatory element binding protein, and by LXR and RXR, that is the liver X receptor and the retinoic acid receptor. The development of the statin class of drugs occurred about 30 years ago. The first statin was discovered by a Japanese pharmaceutical company from soil samples. It was called compactin. The first commercialized statin was called lovastatin, sold under the trade name of Mevacor, and it had an additional methyl group at, as a substituent over compactin. Subsequently, many additional statin drugs were commercialized. Some are included on this slide. These drugs all resemble hydroxymethylglutarol-CoA, or HMG-CoA, the substrate for the HMG-CoA reductase. And they are very potent at decreasing intracellular cholesterol levels and upregulating the LDL receptors by inhibiting specifically the HMG-CoA as a competitive inhibitor. And they have been very effective at lowering LDL cholesterol levels in the range of 25 to 50 percent. They have been widely prescribed, particularly to people uh, over 65 years of age, and they have been very widely used. They dramatically decrease the death rate compared with placebos for otherwise healthy individuals. A, there are new drugs with different mechanisms of action available that also lower cholesterol, and it's a field of very active research with great potential for dramatically affecting cardiovascular disease even further. Now let's turn from the regulation of cholesterol biosynthesis by inhibition of HMG-CoA reductase at the small molecule level to its regulation at a broader level involving a sterile regulatory element, abbreviated SRE, that does so at the promoter level. The LDL receptor coding sequence, as well as HMG-CoA reductase coding sequence, contains a sterile regulatory element, as illustrated here. Brown and Goldstein hypothesized the presence of a protein termed SREBP residing in the endoplasmic reticulum or ER membrane. They hypothesized that it was accompanied by another protein called the SREBP cleavage activating protein, abbreviated SCAP or SCAP. And this SCAP protein 
was totally associated with SREBP. At low sterile levels or under normal physiological concentrations, SREBP accompanied by SCAP move to the Golgi apparatus. When sterile levels rose physiologically or were high, it blocked this transport of SCAP and SREBP to the Golgi. But once transported there, a serine protease known as S1P acted upon it to cleave the regulatory portion of SREBP, liberating what is termed BHLH. The BHLH piece was still associated with the Golgi apparatus, but a second protein, a metalloprotease known as S2P, which is zinc activated, carried out a second cleavage on the remaining protein to liberate BHLH, which then transported itself to the nucleus where it bound to the sterile regulatory element. This is quite complex, so I have written out what I am saying about this scheme so that you can be sure to get the details correctly. So first, the HMG-CoA reductase is controlled in several ways, but the part that is illustrated in the previous slide uh, is that the SREBP, or the sterile regulatory element binding protein, controls the rate of synthesis of HMG-CoA reductase message RNA. The transcription factor itself binds to the sterile regulatory element known as SRE1, which is a short DNA sequence on the 5' prime side of the gene. When it is inactive, it is in the ER associated with SCAP, the SREBP cleavage activating protein, which is, in essence, a cholesterol sensor. When the cholesterol level falls, SCAP escorts SREBP into the small membrane vesicles in the Golgi, and it is released via the two cleavages that are illustrated. Then the resulting piece migrates to the nucleus and binds to SRE to enhance or promote transcription. As the cholesterol level rises, the cleavage is blocked and SREBP in the nucleus is degraded, halting transcription. Now, in addition, there are other regulatory elements or controls. Translation of the HMG-CoA reductase message can be inhibited by non-steroidal metabolites derived from mevalonate and also from dietary cholesterol. Degradation of HMG-CoA reductase is very strictly controlled, and phosphorylation can decrease the activity of the reductase as well. So you can see that this regulation is very complex and has many elements involved. Although the SREBP was first described for HMG-CoA reductase, 
What was a surprising finding was that the SREBP existed in other related protein coding elements as well. The LDL receptor itself has an SREBP and HMG-CoA synthase, which makes the HMG-CoA for the reductase, has two such elements. Farnesyl diphosphate synthase, squalene synthase, both enzymes involved in cholesterol biosynthesis, which uh, are key steps in the synthesis, have these elements as well. Even more surprising was that enzymes involved in fatty acid synthesis that we previously discussed, like acetyl-CoA carboxylase and fatty acid synthase, also have SREBP regulated promoters. And uh, there are other forms of the SREBP as well. Even more extraordinary is the general appearance of SREBPs and their role in globally regulating lipid metabolism. As you can see here is a detailed synopsis of pathways that we discussed in this ser series of lipid lectures and you can see the multitude of steps in the synthesis of cholesterol uh, whereby SREBP plays a role. Similarly, if we just focus on fatty acid synthesis, we have already mentioned places that SREBP helps to regulate and can upregulate fatty acid synthesis as well as then the production of unsaturated fatty acids and their incorporation into triglycerides and phospholipids. And still more comprehensively, the LDL receptor itself has SREBP regulatory elements. So let's summarize this complex area and how key the synthesis of cholesterol and its levels is to overall metabolism of lipids. First, the sterile control of transcription affects more than 30 genes involved in the biosynthesis of cholesterol, triacylglycerols, phospholipids, and fatty acids. The regulation of these events is primarily due to sterile regulated transcription of key rate limiting enzymes and by the regulated degradation of HMG CoA reductase, thereby decreasing the synthesis of cholesterol at the key rate controlling enzymatic step. Activation of transcriptional control occurs via the cleavage of the membrane-bound transcription factor, the sterile regulated element binding protein, or SREBP. And finally, the sterile regulatory element, uh, known as SRE1, is in a gene that is required for transcriptional control. So this is a highly integrated comprehensive system whereby the sensing of cholesterol levels controls many pathways for complex lipid synthesis. Let's now turn to another method by which cholesterol can be regulated. The liver X receptors, termed LXRs, function to promote 
cholesterol efflux from cells and LDL receptor degradation in response to oxysterols. LXR exists as a heterodimer with RXR, which stands for retinoic acid receptor. And this heterodimer resides on the LXR element. There are many coactivators of this, and there can also be inhibitors or repressors of it. But oxysterols themselves activate the LXR portion. On the right is pictured a typical oxysterol, 24S hydroxycholesterol. This is standard cholesterol with an extra single hydroxy group at the 24S position. And there are a number of different positions on the cholesterol backbone where a single hydroxy group can be attached, they're enzymatically generated, and they promote LXR activation. The result is that when LXR is activated, many target genes are expressed, like ABCA1 and ABCG1, which are proteins that promote cholesterol efflux from cells. APOA1, the major component of HDL, picks up that cholesterol it's converted to cholesterol ester and uh, taken up by the liver. IDOL, another product of the activation of the LXR element, promotes degradation of the LDL receptor. You can look at this more diagrammatically. When cholesterol levels are low, in the lower left-hand corner, you can see that the SREBP is residing on the sterile regulatory element and promotes the synthesis of the LDL receptor and HMG-CoA reductase. Under those conditions, where the cholesterol levels are low, the LXR and RXR are blocked and do not promote the synthesis of their requisite proteins. So the HMG-CoA reductase is upregulated under this condition promoting the synthesis of cholesterol, and the LDL receptor is upregulated, promoting the uptake of LDL by the receptors. So in the opposite case on the right, where cholesterol levels are high, then the SREBP does not reside on the sterile regulatory element, and the synthesis of LDL receptor and HMG-CoA reductase does not proceed. In contrast, at high cholesterol levels, and particularly when there's hydroxylated cholesterol or oxysterols, the RXR and the LXR reside on the LXR regulatory element promoting the synthesis of ABCA1 and other related proteins. So under this condition, the SREBP stays in the endoplasmic reticulum, does not go to the Golgi, and instead the LXR ligands promoted by high cholesterol levels allow 
the ABCA1 to be synthesized, resulting in more ApoA1, and the efflux of cholesterol is promoted. So to summarize, at low cellular cholesterol levels, SREBPs are active and LXRs are inactive. One increases the LDL receptor expression, one increases cholesterol synthesis, and there is a decrease in cholesterol efflux. Under high cellular cholesterol conditions, SREBPs are inactive, LXRs are active, and that means that LDR, LDL receptor expression is downregulated, cholesterol synthesis is downregulated, and instead cholesterol is pushed over toward esterification to cholesterol esters, and cholesterol efflux is promoted. So to quickly summarize in writing about SREBPs and LXRs, for LXRs, the LXRs and the related RXRs bind to target genes as heterodimers. So it's complex and a bit more complex than I've illustrated here. The binding of oxysterols such as 24S hydroxycholesterol releases co-repressors and recruits co-activators. Again, a bit more complex than the simple illustrations that we went through. But the net result is transcriptional activation of genes such as ABCA1 and ABCG1 that promote cholesterol efflux and IDOL that promotes degradation of the LDL receptor. Now, this is coordinated because the LXRs work in a coordinate manner with SB, SREBPs to regulate cholesterol homeostasis. When cholesterol levels in the cell are low, SREBPs are active, and when LXRs are inactive under that condition. When cholesterol levels in the cell are high, SREBP processing is suppressed, and production of ligands that induce LXR activity is increased. So cholesterol efflux pathways are particularly important in macrophages, and they play a role in phagocytosis of dead and apoptotic cells.